All right, everybody. Uh, Scott X1307 back one last time here. Uh, gonna try to make this as quick as possible. It's the second time I've done this. Uh, twice now, I've been interrupted by phone calls. So hopefully we can get through this one. Um, as promised, this is uh, a haul from the second haul from the used bookstore. Uh, second time I've gone there. Really good books. Um, the prices aren't bad. They're a little under guide price. And then all their comics, even their Silver Age uh, back issues, which they have, you know, behind the counter uh, under a glass case, like most places. Even those are buy two get one free. Uh, when the guy told me that, I was amazed and decided to just—I I blew the rest of my budget um, at the uh, at the bookstore. Um, this is a little store called Book Nook. There are three of them here uh, around Atlanta, and uh, I plan on going to the other two. So supposedly they have comics at all three locations. Uh, so now I've been to uh, the closest one to me. I've been there twice now, so I want to get down to one of the other locations next. But uh, it'll be. <laughs> I have to wait till I get paid again. But, um, all right, we'll go ahead and get this moving. Um, I started out looking through their, their box of M's, uh, looking for Marvel premieres, Marvel spotlights, um, things like that. Ended up picking up this issue, uh, Marvel premiere number 33, The Mark of Cain. You can see it's in uh, really nice condition. I uh, got it for 250 so I went ahead and grabbed that, trying to complete uh, as much of a run on these Marvel uh, tryout books as possible. Um, then, uh, you know, never been the biggest reader of Iron Man, you know, love the character, love the armor, like most people, but, um, just, you know, it's one of the books I just I always had to pass up for other things. Um, but, uh, I've been trying to pick up some early Iron Mans and, uh, just, you know, decided to thumb through theirs, uh, today, and I came across this cover, I had to pick this book up, I, you know, I've never read this matchup before. I think it's perfect. It's, I mean, it, it, it's, they were tailor made for one another. So I got Iron Man number 150, double size anniversary edition, with the uh, cover battling Doctor Doom. And uh, Doctor Doom, I mean, yeah, he was made for the Fantastic Four, great Fantastic Four villain, but I mean, how, you can't pick a better villain for Iron Man. All science, technology, and a suit of armor. And this guy takes and blends science and magic in a suit of armor. They were made for one another. I mean, that's that you're talking about. To me, that's a perfect clash right there. Iron Man, Doctor Doom. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm really excited to to open this up, read it. Can't wait to see this matchup. I I hope it's going to be good. But, uh, you know, awesome cover either way. It's John Romita Jr., Bob Layton. So, can't wait to crack that open. Um, I did, uh, in uh, going through the box of M's, I didn't really come across any more Marvel spotlights. Uh, there were a couple issues they had in really, really horrible condition. I, I, and I didn't want to pay 2 or $3 for a book with the cover falling off. They weren't key issues or anything, so I passed them up. But I did find some Marvel features. Um, issue 1, 2, and 3, all marked 250. And you'll see here it's um, not the first appearance of Red Sonya. I believe that was actually in Conan. But uh, I believe it's her first uh, solo. It's, it, I know it predates Red Sonya number 1 from Marvel. And uh, it actually is based on uh, Howard's uh, story. So I got issue number one, uh, number two, and number three. All of them in um, very good condition. A little bit of wear. There's some spine stress. Some, uh, some quarter inch long or eighth inch long stressing on the spine. Um, no real bad creasing or anything, and they're all pretty much in the same condition, so I was glad to pick those up. Remember, buy two, get one free, so 
And uh, going through the rest of the books, I'm trying to find a few more to, to eat, um, actually get an odd number to uh, trying to, to make it, take advantage of the buy two, get one. So uh, I decided to pick this up. Yeah, it's a reprint, but I think even as a reprint, it still stands up. Yeah, they use the original cover, which is just awesome. So I grabbed this Marvel Super Action number 18, which is a reprint of the first appearance of the Vision. I would love to have the actual first printing in Avengers, um, of the first appearance of the Vision, but uh, I'll take this for now. Um, really can't wait to read this story. Never read his uh, first appearance, or his intro, but um, yeah, awesome, awesome cover. So had to grab that. And I picked this book up here. It's a little more than I normally pay. Um, you know, my budget's kind of small, so I usually stick with the the, the dollar books, two dollar books, um, quarter books whenever I can find them. Uh, but this is just too good to pass up. I don't think the price is too bad, especially considering it's buy two get one. Um, awesome, awesome cover. Really didn't know much about this book until I uh, saw couple other people's videos I think it was hero hunter 81 uh, maybe mercenot uh, I know a couple of people have this and it showed it off in their videos so um, if I'm not remembering remembering correctly uh, you know thanks to uh, whoever showed this off um, I had to pick this up tells to astonish number 98 Hulk and Submariner it's just an awesome cover that that all blue cover it really um, yeah, I mean, it really, it's, you got to feel like it's underwater. So, can't wait to read this. But, uh, I mean, I will admit, I just I picked it up because of the cover. It just, it's, it's just one of those great classic covers to me. It really does. It looks like an underwater scene with everything tinted blue, which I think is really hard to do for artists. Um, but this is, they did a, it was a really good job on this one. Glad to add that to the collection. Hopefully I can go back up there and pick up some more of their uh, Tales to Astonish run. They had a few books. And uh, this, I don't know, lately I've been a sucker for these old Marvel magazines, so I had to pick this up. It's uh, Marvel Preview Presents, number 22, with Merlin. Uh, they just have some fantastic uh, painted artwork covers. Um, you know, I'm a sucker for painted covers that's why I pick up as many Dell and Gold Key Turox and uh, things like that and uh, I think this kind of falls in line with that same kind of cover art but also I have um, I have about five of these uh, Marvel preview magazines now I have the first Star Lord um, I think I have the number one actually uh, a couple others I have to go back through them but I had it marked for three dollars, so yeah. Uh, I'd go ahead and add this to the collection. Um, uh, this uh, this next item here, it's another Marvel magazine, a Marvel Super Special. If you remember those, a lot of those were done based on uh, popular movies and things at the time. I have a uh, a Dark Crystal issue, um, in horrible condition, but uh, you know I'm sure everybody remembers that movie. Uh, I hope uh, at least at least anybody in their um, 30s and onward will remember this movie. I, I, always one of my favorite kind of B-rated uh, science fiction or fantasy movies. Uh, it always struck me as kind of being like King Arthur with um, aliens. So yeah, King Arthur in space. Um, so I had to pick this up. Marvel Super Special number 28, based on the movie Kroll. And I people remember the movie as a really, really early uh, film appearance of Liam Neeson. Uh, one of his first American film appearances, I believe. But it's got this great cover with this scene from the movie. You know, you can see the giant alien that they had to fight. And there's the main character and that badass weapon, that glaive that he had. It just it popped open with the blades and you could throw it and it would come back to him at will. And cut through almost anything and 
Uh, I mean, it flew through the air. Uh, it's, I just, I remember seeing that as a kid. I wanted one of those so bad. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, I had to pick this up. They had it marked for $4. Uh, unfortunately, these are not included in the buy two. Get one free, but uh, what the hell, man. You know, it's a good price. And uh, really loved that movie, so had to add that to the collection. And this next thing I picked up, I picked it up, well, there's three main reasons. One, uh, because of the title. It's an Astonishing Tales. Um, it's issue number four, uh, appearance of Kazar and Doctor Doom. It's it's not a key issue, it's not a first appearance, uh, but it, it's uh, early in that Astonishing Tales run. Uh, it's from, uh, I think, February 71. Uh, but I picked this up because I um, never picked up any CGC books. Uh, I've never seen anything to CGC. I'm really on the fence about that. I'm I'm sure like everybody. I'm kind of um, I'm kind of iffy on their grading standards. I, there are too many too many stories of people uh, uh, getting wrong grades on their books. Uh, cracking them open, sending them back to CG CGC, and they be, they'll be graded higher or lower, just depending uh, than they were the first time. Um, plus, with their turnaround time and the, the price that it takes for them to, to, to grade a book, and, and what is it with their pricing? The more expensive your book, the more they're going to charge you. Like it, whether the book's worth you know ten thousand dollars or ten dollars it doesn't cost them anything extra to flip that book open and inspect it they do the same job so just I don't know some of their business practices just don't set well with me but I picked this up because uh, like I said it's Astonishing Tales it is a CGC book and um, I don't know I mean it's priced dead on to the book and the third main reason I picked this up is for reference. Um, being CDC graded, it'll be a good reference for me to judge other books that I have and books that I pick up in the future, um, you know, as far as condition. Uh, it's, it's not a high grade book. It's uh, graded at a 4.0. They had it for $8. I looked that up in the guide and the book is worth $8 in 4.0. So, all I can say is the uh, dude lost his money, however much it costs to get it graded, which I think is like $30 a book or something, I, the last time I checked, I don't know. But, um, yeah, I, you know, it's priced dead on, so I didn't overpay, didn't underpay, unfortunately. Um, but, yeah, with it being graded, I think it'll make a good reference for um, my books. Um, you know, a good idea of what a 4.0 actually is, at least in the eyes of CGC. So I went ahead and grabbed that. $8. Didn't break the bank, so. First CGC, not a key issue or anything, but it, at least it's an older issue, and, um, you know, I can use this for uh, grading purposes. Last two issues I picked up. Um, uh, spent a little money. I ain't a little money. Not a whole lot, but um, looking for these books, it's like a needle in a haystack in any condition. And I'm sure you guys, gals, everybody knows, um, but they have, they had a few early X-Men, by early X-Men I mean um, before the reprint era, uh, so it, I had to pick these up. Prices I don't think were too bad for the condition. Uh, you know, regardless, these these will this this goes in to help me complete my X Men run. They'll go in my collection. I I probably won't get rid of them unless I happen to come across better copies for a good price. But um, anyway, I picked up X Men number forty four. You see, I had it marked for twenty. Uh, and you can see it's got some cover wear. Yes. Corners aren't sharp. Edges aren't that sharp. It's uh, it's got some wear here. I don't believe it's water damage. I think it's just from being opened and read a bunch of times. Um, little wear in the corners. But uh, you know the artwork is still pretty clear. Um, 
It's got a couple of spots of something on it here. Other than that, it's not too bad. Um, interior pages are what you would expect from this age of book with the cover and that. They're they're not brown, but they're they're tan. But um, it is the first Silver Age appearance of the Golden Age Red Raven. So it's kind of a uh, minor key issue in that X-Men run, but um, either way, um, I saw it, decided to pick it up. Pick it up. It'll help complete X-Men run, and that's one of the earliest. That's the second oldest X-Men book that I have now. So really happy to have that. And uh, this last book, same deal. Uh, you know, I may have paid too much for it. Um, I, I don't know. The condition is not great, and you'll see. But this this makes this the old, the the earliest X Men book that I have. Um, it's the earliest book that they had. The guy said they had X Men number two a while back, uh, just a few weeks ago, and they sold it for three hundred dollars. Uh, he said it was probably in about very good condition. So somebody I think got a pretty good deal on X-Men number two for $300 That's a book personally. I If it looked like this I'd pay $300 for it and I'm sure most people would um, But this X-Men number 34 Nothing special about it that I know of You can see it's got a tear here um, Covers it's off white. It's not white anymore and it, it's got some decent wear to it. They had it marked at 25. Um, I actually got them to knock uh, five dollars off, and they still did the buy two get one free and included these Silver Age issues. So, all in all, I don't think it came out too bad. Uh, you know, every third book being free, I know, and and I can tell from the way, just like any place, they buy two get one free. Um, your least expensive item is what's going to be free, but hey, you know that's still that's knocking that's knocking some money off. So yeah, X Men 34, X Men 44. Really, really happy to add those to the collection. Wish they were in better shape, but um, you know sometimes you just you got to take bad condition over no condition at all. I believe uh, as Gimpy 204 says. Uh, you know, and he's right. It's better to have one even in crap condition than to not have it. So, um, glad to add those. And, uh, yeah, pretty uh, big day, I guess. Um, some Silver Age X Men, first CDC book. Not bad, not bad at all. Um, looking forward to next time hooking back up with my man with 25 cent books he has some deals in there and I'm really anxious to go back through there and, and find what I've missed previously but um yeah that'll do it for this weekend uh gotta work tomorrow so unfortunately that'll be that'll be the only chance I get to have to get out this week um so uh, it'll be next weekend hopefully I'll have a day off Saturday or Sunday uh to be able to go again but, uh, you know, until then, uh, appreciate everybody who's liked and subscribed and commented. Um, keep comments coming, please. You guys are pointing out things, uh, you know, that, that about books that I didn't know, uh, especially, you know, books that I have, things that I, I should know, or at least I feel I should know. If I own a book, I should know about the book. And uh, some people pointed out a few things I didn't know. I appreciate that. Um... Everything's been going great. It's, you know, about two months, I got like 45 subscribers. It really amazes me. I can't believe that many people want to see my ugly face talking about comic books. But uh, yeah, it's really awesome. Nice to have uh, someone to show off uh, collection to again and uh, get the feeling that they appreciate it the same way I do. Uh, and I appreciate everybody else's collections and videos. Like I said, I've said this before. I'll say it again. Uh, I don't watch, I used to be a TV, I was a couch potato, a TV hog, um, if I couldn't find anything else to do, there was always TV, so, you know, if I had free time, didn't have to work, wasn't out getting books, I was sitting watching TV, now with the state of TV, man, I'm just waiting for Walking Dead to come back on, in the meantime, I keep going through YouTube, picking up more comic book channels, checking out everybody else's new videos, everybody I've already subscribed to, um, 
it's kind of like it reminds me of uh, being a kid and waiting for Saturday morning cartoons. That, that's kind of how I feel about everybody's videos. So everybody keep it up. I'll keep posting uh, when I can. And uh, like I said, keep up the comments and likes and su su subscriptions if you if you want. I uh, greatly appreciate it. And um, oh, one last thing. Um, I know pretty much not everybody, but a lot of people do uh, these. Uh, uh, you know, uh, contest videos for um, when they hit 50 subscribers, 100 subscribers, things like that. And um, I know there, there, there's some talk about that. Some people aren't really into that. Um, I think it's pretty cool. I think it's a neat way to say thank you to people that support your channel. Um, so everybody that's done that, um, you know, I, I, I've only entered one contest so far. But, uh, you know, thanks to everybody that's that's done that um, and if you if you don't think it's cool I mean that that's you know that's great we all have different opinions I can understand why um, I'm sure there have been people out there have done that just so they could get more subscribers um, but I think for the most part people do it is just as a thank you and um, let me you guys let me know what you think I'm thinking about doing that I've started setting a few books aside some doubles that I have nothing really expensive but a um, couple of minor key issues and I think some pretty neat stuff um, so let me know what you think uh, contest videos good idea bad idea um, you know I'm still debating on whether to do one because I'm approaching 50 subscribers I think it'll be pretty neat and I may do it but um, if you guys let me know what you think I I'd appreciate that and um, I guess that's about it. You guys have a, a good uh, rest of the weekend. So I guess that'll just be Sunday now, and um, we'll uh, we'll do this again. Until then, take care.